actually been. So if you watched my last video and might be wondering why I care so much about how my dog's name is spelled, I mean, don't all dog owners? Or is it just me? Either way, I'm a spelling freak. And by spelling freak, I mean I aced pretty much all of the spelling tests in grade school, and I participated in spelling bees for all six possible years. Middle school was definitely the highlight of my life in this sense. In sixth grade, I won the school spelling bee, and I was runner-up at the district level, which includes pretty much all of the American schools in Europe. Seventh grade was definitely my standout year, but I almost lost at the school level. There were only two of us left, it was my turn, and I misspelled <laughs> Then the other person went up and he had to spell petrify, and I was like, oh great, he knows that word and he's gonna win. But he ended up spelling petrified, and it was considered wrong. So the next round, I spelled marionette correctly, while the other person misspelled gnome. He spelled it N-O-M-B. I mean, his mind probably blanked, and he was probably thinking of the word numb, which I guess is kind of understandable. <coughs> but it's still an ongoing joke in my family. Runner up, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. And my championship word was catapult. Then I was lost to the district level for my second year in a row. So during the district level, eventually almost everyone got eliminated except for two of us. The other guy at some point misspelled ethanol. He spelled it with an E instead of an A, which is a pretty forgivable mistake if you've never seen the word before. And I spelled punctual correctly, which I guess technically made me the best speller of all of Europe that year. If you google my name and maybe add spelling me, there's an article about that day which I'll probably just link to below. Okay, if you go to read it and you get to the part where I said, oh my gosh, that was so easy. It's not what it looks like. It wasn't supposed to be like a boastful, like, oh my gosh, that was so easy. It was supposed to be more of a surprise, like, oh my gosh, that was, um... I probably should have said something like quite easy instead of so easy. The way it looks on that article just makes me sound really conceited, oh gosh. But anyway, by winning the district level, I got to participate in the National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. Here's a few clips from that experience. Sonical. May I have the definition, please? Bragging, boastful, thrasonical. May I have the language of origin, please? It's from a Roman literary name. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? A common trait of thrasonical people is using the word thrasonical with an obnoxious grin on their face. Thrasonical. T H R A S O N I C A L. Thrasonical. Ah, that was quite a fun experience. Unfortunately, I didn't even make it to the semifinals, but I had fun nonetheless. Now, 8th grade, I'm a lot more reluctant to talk about. I mean, I did win the school level again, but I wasn't even runner-up for the district level. I misspelled this one word that I really should have known, but I guess my mind blanked and I got nervous or something. So there went my last chance at a $30,000 cash prize. I mean, that's quite a bit of money, and that's only one of the prizes that you get if you win the National Spelling Bee. I kind of wonder why high schoolers aren't allowed to participate in spelling bees, because I'm pretty sure a senior going off to college needs $30,000 a lot more than a third grader. Oh well. So even though my spelling bee days are over, I'm still crazy about spelling. When I see misspelled words on the internet, it irks me. I mean, I get that not everyone's a great speller, but when I see someone misspell a commonly used word, I'm just like... I think one of my biggest pet peeves is when people spell definitely with an A, or worse, when they say defiantly when they mean definitely. Those are two completely different words! And then when people mix up two, two, and two, or there, there, and there. Wait, I'm talking about grammar now. But I mean, I'm a grammar Nazi also, so... Like, when I'm writing my books, I try to keep it as grammatically correct as possible, even with the dialogue. But the thing with that is not everyone speaks grammatically correctly. Like, if you're just talking to a friend, you're probably not gonna be speaking formally or anything. And I realize that if I have all of my characters speaking grammatically correctly, they're all probably gonna sound the same. I guess that's one of the things about being an author, giving each character his or her own distinct voice. But especially when it comes to the narrative, I probably waste way too much time trying to figure out how to word a sentence or if it's grammatically correct. But I mean, depending on the situation, I'm not completely against improper grammar either. I use chat speak all the time on my social media accounts, mostly abbreviations for long phrases like LOL, TBH, IDK, but I spell out words like please and your. When I say please written as PLZ on the internet, I read it in my head as pulls. And then you are as your looks like er. I guess that about wraps up my experience with spelling. So if you've been watching my previous videos, then you know what it's time for. 
with a relatively small mosasaur that probably hunted fish and other small aquatic creatures in the late Cretaceous oceans between North America and Europe. This rather obscure marine reptile was at one point named Baptosaurus by Osniel Charles Marsh because of a fish with a similar name, but a single letter difference is sufficient so the predator has retained its original name. As per usual, you can click subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. See you later!